Well, welcome back to West Orange Week, and as promised, uh, we have just amazing people that hail from this community, and one that I recently read about and didn't make the West Orange connection is Mr. Alan Flusser. Alan, welcome back to, uh, to town. Alan is an author and world-renowned designer, uh, headquartered now out of Manhattan, and uh, just somebody I find so interesting, and I know that you will too. How'd you get started in fashion, Alan? It's coming here from old graduate from West Orange High School. Well, my father was considered a bit of a dandy in his time. He was in the real estate business, and uh, he loved clothes. He got married rather late in life, and uh, used to think that Fred Astaire and people of that sort walked on water, which if you watch Fred Astaire dance, yes, you he, might, yeah, might, I would might agree have thought with that. that. And uh, my mother was actually, uh, prior to getting married, owned several dress shops in Englewood, so she had a kind of a, uh, a feel for style. So between the two of them, I grew up uh, uh, around people who uh, were interested in the way they dressed. and. Uh, as I've said before, on occasion, my, whenever a Fred Astaire type film would come on the television, uh, uh, my father and mother would sit us down and we would watch Fred and Ginger do whatever they were going to do. So I became kind of aware of the possibilities of dressing. My father was actually had very good taste. And then. Um, Your education, uh, nowadays, the uh, you know, kids come out of school and, and spend just years of study, whether it's FIT or other universities where they specialize. Right. Were you academically trained in that regard? No. Uh, in fact, uh, during that period of time, uh, or at least in my uh, teenage years, I was uh, a golfer. And I was a championship right, golfer. Championship. You won the club championship. Which club? Mountain Ridge Country Club. Okay, sure. And so I kind of had one foot or one interest, so to speak, in golf and maybe being a professional and one in, in, in men's clothes. Um, but uh, uh, well, I guess it wasn't uh, when I, I was recruited at from Roll uh, for Rollins College, which at the time was one That's of the- That's down in uh, Florida. Florida, right, Winter Park. And that was one of the top golf schools at the time. And so I went there uh, as a freshman and after about a year, I decided I didn't think I was probably going to be good enough to like earn money on the tour, so I came back. I'm going to stop you there because sure. we can go in a whole many different directions. Sure. But I know you have some relationships with with Jack Nicholas and some amazing uh, I, I icons in the world of golf. That's true. I, I had an opportunity when I was a freshman. Uh, I was one of the few freshmen that ever played on the actual Rollins uh, uh, team. Uh, usually Kipano after Ohio we, State, huh? Well, we, we know actually at that time Jack was a, uh, a professional, and uh, I played in a pro am with uh, uh, teamed up uh, with both him and Sam Snead, if you can believe that. Wow. Uh, Florida I know, I, icon. I, I didn't know where to look first. Uh, that was really one of the great, great you know, uh, you know privileges of my life. Um, and uh, but anyway, I, I played golf. Uh, uh, for the West Orange High School mm -hmm. team, which won the state championship. Wow, you know what? I didn't know days. that. that. That's a great piece of history because, the, believe me, the state championship teams are, are far and few between. Uh, we just had a soccer team that was the state champ, and it was the first time in about 20 years that we had. Actually, there's a fellow, Bill Brody, who kind of uh, rides herd on uh, all of these championship teams, and uh, unbeknownst to me, I actually ha didn't, didn't realize that we had. And uh, we were all invited to uh, to uh, some sort of a ceremony, which unfortunately I was out of the country for, and I couldn't attend. But we actually won the the state right. golf championship, so that was great. Uh, you know, I want to get to your amazing life, but I'm going to tell you something I bet you don't know from West Orange is that the term mulligan, which you know, as a championship golfer, you're probably not that familiar <laughs> with the rest of us. <laughs> no, are. no, no, I know what it is. Mr. Mulligan's from town. That name really? and that phrase came from West Orange, from Essex uh, Fells Country Club. When he was a kid, when he worked there, they needed a fourth. He'd come out and they'd give him a mulligan. And Dwight Eisenhower played there learned the term and used it in Life magazine, and so Mr. Mulligan still walks 10 miles a day around wow. the streets here in West Orange. Oh, that's amazing. I didn't know that at all. Pretty good one, right? Yeah, that's absolutely. So let's get back to this amazing <laughs> okay. person now. Well, I don't so, so then it, through the, uh, through the uh, change in your life that you weren't going to be a professional athlete and leaving I, I, Rollins. Right. I, I came back and I started to go to Temple University in uh, uh, Philadelphia, and I started to date uh, a young lady whose father was a very was a builder in, in, in New Jersey, and he was a heavy set guy, and he had to have his clothes made, and he liked the way I dressed. And so he asked me if I would a accompany him to his tailor, who happened to be in uh, New Jersey, in Clifton, New Jersey, 
just to help him pick out fabrics and mm -hmm. make any recommendations. Anyway, the upshot was that he liked the way he looked uh, as a result of whatever my input at, in, at that time. Sorry, so Joseph Banks. <laughs> so he, in his entrepreneurial spirit, uh, recommended that maybe I should, uh, he, he would introduce me to several of his friends and I could take them to the tailor and charge them money for t you know, styling or mm -hmm. my input and then also charge the tailor for you know, bringing him customers, which I actually did. But instead of having the tailor, instead of charging the tailor, I told the tailor, okay, in exchange for bringing people, if you would make me clothes. So from about this, you know, the age of 19 or so, or 18, I started having my clothes custom made, which became the basis of how I learned about design and things of that sort. And, and so then how do you take it? That's amazing from notwithstanding how you and your parents and had a little bit of background into that, or at least an eye for it. How do you go from there to the, uh, to the Flusser uh, empire, so to speak? <laughs> yeah, the mini empire as such. Um, well, well uh, author, I mean, you, you have done, you know, we'll talk about the incredible things you've done, so right, don't be humble. Um, well, um, one day, I, I actually, after I graduated from college, I decided I was going to go into the insurance, but my father was in the real estate business, and so uh, I, I took my real estate license and uh, learned a little bit about insurance. I did it for about one year, and I finally decided, no, that wasn't for me. And one day, I made this declaration to my parents, I'm going in the men's business, which nobody from my family had any background in whatsoever. Uh, and uh, But we knew a few people, and I ended up getting a job, moving into New York, and getting a job at Phillips Van Usen uh, in the boys' department. And from there, um, I was very fortunate. I worked there for a year, and I went to, then I went to, took some courses at FIT and Parsons, just a textile, that was the piece that textile courses, yeah. yeah. Although Ralph Lauren is today the most successful designer in the world, and he's never seen mm -hmm. a classroom uh, devoted to the subject of fashion or style or, or whatever. Um, and then I ended up, I got a job at uh, Pierre Cardin, which in the 70s was like the hot designer. And uh, I spent five or six years working, doing the sportswear uh, collection for Pierre Cardin in is, this country. Is it as cutthroat as like, you know, it, it's a different aspect of it. I think of the Devil Wears Prada and that whole no. like portrayal of how... <laughs> the men's business is a lot more genteel mm -hmm. than the women's. It's, you know, there's not as many upheavals in fashion. It's a more evolutionary kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the women's is a bit more cutthroat and uh, uh, there's a lot more pressure, I think, in the women's business. There's more change, there's, you know, there's... Uh, a lot of different personalities. The men's business, not to say that it's not difficult or not personality sure. driven, but it's it's always it's it's a lot more collegial, and uh, in those days it certainly was. When did you uh, transition to My taking own. your own line, so to speak? Uh, actually, uh, I used to do the fashion shows for Pierre Cardin in mm -hmm. this country, and one day Pierre decided out of the blue that he was going to come to our fashion show. Now he had licensees all over the world, but the, l the company that produced the Cardan merchandise, uh, men's clothes in this country was the, his largest licensee. So he decided he'd come and we used to give a breakfast a show at the Four Seasons. Anyway, to make a long story short, I told the people, you know, if Pierre comes and he stands up and takes a bow for this merchandise that basically I've designed for the American market, Having and he's just had his fashion show about two weeks before, so all of the fashion editors were in Paris, saw his stuff. Now they're going to come here. He's going to stand up. I said, I think that's going to be a political, a, a disaster. Uh, uh, and, but of course, the French and Pierre, they said, no, 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 they're not going to acknowledge anybody. So he came and took credit. Mm -hmm. He came and took credit. And from that point on, the uh, fashion press, the American fashion press, were so, you know, upset by it that they started to. Uh, every time there was a P something by Pierre Cardin in, in menswear, they would say Alan Flusser for Pierre Cardin, which of course in those days was, you know, there was no wasn't recognition, done wasn't done. So m I got catapulted <laughs> a lot faster into my own business or in a certain amount of recognition so I could start my business. I'm sure I Pierre wasn't all that pleased by that. <laughs> no, he was not pleased. He wasn't pleased with me in general because I used to wear clothes that were not Pierre Cardin clothes, they were like Alan Flusser clothes. And, but they liked the results of the business, so they kind of kept me around sure, until... Sure, making them money so they could right. put up with the uh, egos. Right. But uh, at the point at which I started to get equal billing, 
uh, it was just a matter of time until we parted company. And I started my business in 1979 with a former executive from Pierre Cardin and uh, 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 an investment from a Japanese trading company.